and some China too. Uh, please uh, let's welcome Elaine. And 
build that sort of a more of a productive relationship, right? And so in my role, I actually ended up uh, running a ton of identity and diversity workshops um, for students. And I think one of the nice things of being a teacher is that you teach others so they learn, but you also learn a lot. And I learned a lot about what it meant to be, or to how I understood my own identity in a different type of society. And I also started more embracing um, my uh, majority, minority identity when it paid off to be the minority, a foreigner, I flashed my US passport around. But then when it paid off to be the majority, such as when you're haggling, I'm totally Chinese, no, I'm not very totally Chinese, right? Yeah. And um, I think being in China also taught me a lot about being American. Uh, so I, would all, I consider myself relatively patriotic. I sing all the patriotic songs, I cheer for Team USA. But there was one incident in China where like, um, I was on this train and this group of rowdy foreigners tried to pass themselves off as Americans. And I just got so angry and I felt this need to defend my nationality, which is not something that you would have to do in America, right? And then, um, speaking of being patriotic, um, you know, as kindergartners, we used to have to like, you know, pledge our allegiance to the flag. And like, as a kid, I didn't really understand what that meant. It was only when one of my students in China came up to me and asked me what all this was, and I explained it to them, and I thought, wow, these words are actually really powerful. And being American in a foreign country, you're often asked to represent your culture, and I was often asked to explain all these American traditions, like, why do we barbecue for July 4th? Why do you guys eat hot dogs at baseball games, right? And you know, honestly, I don't know. I really don't know what to do. Right? But I think it was really great because it forced me to think about all these questions that I never would have thought to be curious about, right? So I went off to China to kind of better understand my own identity as a Chinese person. But I think what it also taught me was to be really proud of my American identity as well. And I think I'm equally proud to be both Chinese and American. And so my ABC identity, my American born Chinese identity, uh, I think in this journey to identify as such, I learned that it's really only when you take yourself out of an environment that you're familiar with that you really start to truly understand who you are. And I'm excited to continue on this journey with all of you in the room. Thank you. I was in New York until I was 13, and 
um, you know, at the time I had a lot of friends who came from this immigrant background, and it was so normal, we never questioned it. it I think it really was when I first moved to Georgia, and people started asking me about my identity, but I was like, oh, actually, I'm quite different, right? And um, I think, like, you know, like you said, like, as a kid, like, all you want to do is just fit in, right? And, like, my way of fitting in was just to sort of give up on the identity, and it really is not a chapter of my life that I'm super proud of, because I'm so proud to be Chinese right now, right? Um, yeah, and I think it really was a growing moment for me. Um, as for friends who've, um, who've also experienced this, uh, I think probably a lot of my friends did as well, but I think um, I'll let them tell their stories. <laughs> Thank you. All right, do we have time for more questions? One more. Oh, one more, okay. Do you feel more like a New Yorker? <clears throat>